In this masterclass, Robert McKee goes through one of the greatest scenes in cinema history with a technique he calls writing from the inside out. The scene in question is the second act climax in the film Chinatown written by Robert Town and directed by Roman Polanski. It confronts Jack Nicholson as Giddies, a private detective, and Faye Dunaway as Evelyn, whose husband mysteriously died and is the object of Giddies' investigation. For McKee, writing from the inside out is a very simple procedure. When writing dialogue for your characters, for each beat you ask yourself, if I were this character in these circumstances, what would I do? The gaps McKee will be referencing to in this scene is the space that opens up between the expectation of one character when he throws out a line of dialogue and the result or impact on the other character, creating a divide between expectation and reality, between one character's view of the world and its truth. McKee calls this the substance of story. Exterior, bungalow, Santa Monica. Giddes' car speeds into the driveway. As Giddes, you're still thinking, I'll be cool, but seeing the house, an image of Evelyn flashes through your thoughts, evoking a sudden anger. A gap cracks open between your resolve and emotions. Your foot slams down, screech of brakes. You jump out of the car, to hell with her. Slam the door. Let her know you're here. Slam. Feet pounding to the house. Hand grabbing the doorknob. Get her before she can run. Damn, the door's locked. Fist banging on the door. Interior bungalow. Khan, Evelyn's Chinese servant, hears pounding and heads for the door. As other characters enter, shift back and forth from their points of view. Now act the scene from Khan's point of view. If I were Khan at this moment, what would I do? Now, as Khan, you think, who the hell's that? Ten to one, that loud-mouthed detective. <laughs> Paint on the butler's smile. Expecting to handle things, you unlock the door. <laughs> I was right. Him. Khan. Dialogue. You wait. wait. Now back in Giddes' thoughts. That snotty butler again. Giddes. Dialogue. You wait. Chao Hoi Kai Dai. As Khan, the sudden gap between expectation and result inverts your smile, thinking, he not only barges in, but insults me in Cantonese. Confusion, anger, throw him out. Evelyn's footsteps behind you, protect her. Shifting to Evelyn's point of view. If I were Evelyn in this situation, what would I do? You adjust your necklace as you reach the bottom of the stairs. Seeing Giddes, you're glad. You've been calling him, hoping to get his help. After packing all morning, you're in a hell-bent rush to catch the 5.30 train to Mexico. Thinking, it's Jake. I know he cares. He'll help me. How do I look? Hands instinctively flutter to hair, face. Mm, Khan looks worried. A reassuring smile to Khan, a gesture, signaling him to leave. Evelyn, dialogue. It's all right, Khan. Glancing back at Giddes. You're thinking, thank God he's here. Now I'm not alone. Evelyn, dialogue. How are you? I've been calling you. Now as Giddes, you turn away, thinking, she's so beautiful. Stay tough, man. Don't look at her. Be ready. She'll tell lie on lie. Giddes, dialogue. Oh, yeah? As Evelyn, searching his face, something's bothering him. I can't get his eye. Poor man looks tired. Evelyn, dialogue. Did you get some sleep? Giddes, sure. Now is Evelyn, hmm, and hungry. I'll feed him a bit of normalcy, please God. Evelyn, dialogue. Have you had lunch? Khan can fix you something. Now is Giddes, lunch. What's this bullshit? Do it now. Giddes, dialogue. Where's the girl? Now is Evelyn. The gap flies open. Shock rocks you. Why is he asking me that? What does he want with her? What's gone wrong? Evelyn. Dialogue. Upstairs. Why? Now is Giddes. That soft voice. The innocent why. Keep cool. Giddes. Dialogue. I want to see her. Back in Evelyn's thoughts. Don't let him. Lie. Find out first. Evelyn. Dialogue. She's having a bath now. Why do you want to see her? Now is Giddes. Disgusted with her lies. Don't let her get to you. Looking around, seeing half-packed suitcases. 
She's making a run for it. Look what I got here. Watch out. She'll lie again. Get us. Dialogue. Going somewhere? Now is Evelyn. Should have told him, but there wasn't time. Can't hide it. Tell the truth. Won't hurt. He'll understand. Evelyn. Dialogue. Yes, we have a 5.30 train to catch. Now is Giddis. <laughs> what do you know? Sounds honest. A minor gap. Doesn't matter. Put an end to her bullshit. Let her know you mean business. Where's the phone? There. Picking it up. Now is Evelyn. Confusion. Choking fear. Who's he calling? Evelyn. Dialogue. Jake. Seeing him dial. Oh, God help me. As Giddis, ear to the phone. Answer, you creeps. You hear a police secretary pick up. Giddis, dialogue. J.J. Giddis for Lieutenant Escobar. As Evelyn, a rush of adrenaline hits you. The police. Panic. No, no, keep calm, keep calm. It must be about Hollis. But I can't wait. We have to leave now. Evelyn, dialogue. Look, what's the matter? What's wrong? I, I, what's wrong? I told you we have a 5.30 train. As Giddis, thinking... Enough. Shut her up. Get us. Dialogue. You're going to miss your train. Talking into the phone. Lou, meet me at 1972 Canyon Drive. Yeah, as soon as you can. As Evelyn, anger rises, but you hold on to a shred of hope, thinking, the fool, but maybe he's calling the police to help me. Evelyn. Dialogue. Why'd you do that? Now is get us a smug satisfaction. She's trying to get tough, but I got her now. Feels good. I'm right at home. Tossing your hat on the table. Giddis, dialogue. Know any good criminal lawyers? As Evelyn, your pride stiffens. You try to close the widening gap. Look at him swagger. I slept with him. Paid for his help. Who does he think he is? Evelyn, dialogue. No. As Giddis, so innocent. Well, she'll know some lawyers now. You take a cigarette out of a silver case. Get us. Dialogue. Don't worry. I can recommend a couple. They're expensive, but you can afford it. Back in Evelyn's point of view, you watch Giddis calmly take a lighter out of his pocket, sit down, and light a cigarette. My God, he's threatening me. Don't panic. Handle it. Th there must be a reason for all this. Your throat tightens in anger. Evelyn. Dialogue. Will you, Will you please tell me what this is all about? As Giddis. <laughs> Angry, huh? Good. Watch this. You slip the cigarette lighter back into your pocket and with the same motion bring out a handkerchief. You set it on the table and carefully pull back the four corners of the cloth to reveal the eyeglasses. Giddis. Dialogue. I found, I found these backyard. in your backyard in the pond. They belonged to your husband, belong didn't, to your they? husband didn't they? Didn't they? As Evelyn now, dazed, you can feel the gap, refusing to close. Nothing makes sense. Glasses in Hollis's fish pond. What's he after? A rising dread of something terrible about to happen. Evelyn, dialogue. I don't know. Yes, yes probably. As Giddis, <laughs> an opening. Get her now. Make her confess. You jump up. Giddis, dialogue. Yes, positively. That's where he was drowned. As Evelyn, you're stunned. Killed at home? Evelyn, dialogue. What? what? Now as Giddis, you suppress your fury. <laughs> Playing that innocent crap to the end. Make her talk. Now. Giddis, dialogue. There's, There's no, no time, time to be shocked, shocked by the truth. The coroner's report proves that he had salt water in his lungs when he was killed. Just take my word for it, all right? Now I want to know how it happened, and I want to know why, and I want to know before Escobar gets here because I don't want to lose my license. As Evelyn, his sneering, livid face pushes into yours. Chaos, paralyzing fear, grasping for control. Evelyn, dialogue. I, I don't know what you're talking about. This is the craziest, most insane thing. As Giddis, your tough interrogator persona and your emotions part company. A flash of anger. Hands shoot out, grasp her, fingers digging in, making her wince. Giddis, dialogue. Stop it! You see the look of shock and pain in her eyes. Another gap opens, a sudden stab of compassion. Feelings for her struggle against your rage. They win for the moment, your hands drop. She's hurting. Man, she didn't do it in cold blood. Could happen to anybody. 
so give her a chance. Lay it out for her as if you saw it yourself, but get the truth. Giddis, dialogue. I'm going to make it easy for you. You were jealous. You had a fight. He fell, hit his head. It was an accident. But his girl's a witness, so you had to shut her up. You don't have the guts to harm her, but you've got the money to shut her mouth. Yes or no? As Evelyn, you feel the gap finally crashing shut with horrible meaning. My God, he thinks I did it. Evelyn, dialogue. No. As Giddis now, hearing her emphatic answer, good, finally sounds like the truth, cooling off. All right, so she's not bribing her. But what the hell's going on? Get us. Dialogue. Who is she? And don't give me that crap about a sister, because you don't have a sister. As Evelyn, now the thoughts rushing as the greatest shock of all splits you in two. He wants to know who she is. God help me. You're weak with years of carrying the secret. Back to the wall. No place to turn except to get us. If I don't tell him, the police. If I do... Evelyn, dialogue. I'll tell you. I'll tell you the truth. As Giddis now, feeling confident, focused. Hmm, at last. Giddis, dialogue. Good. What's her name? As Evelyn now. Her name. Dear God, her name. Evelyn, dialogue. Catherine. Giddis. Catherine who? As Evelyn, you brace for the worst. Tell it all. See if he can take it, if I can take it. Evelyn, dialogue. She's my daughter. As Giddis now, your rage erupts. Your expectation of talking her into a confession explodes. Your hand lashes out, slapping her flush across the face. As Evelyn, you feel searing pain, but you don't react. Weakness, no impulse to strike back. A lifetime of guilt, paralysis. Giddis, dialogue. I said the truth. Evelyn, she's my sister. As Evelyn, you go numb, feeling nothing but a letting go. You stand passively, almost willing him to hit you. As Giddis, you slap her again. Evelyn, dialogue. She's my daughter. As Giddis, you slap her yet again, seeing her tears. Evelyn, dialogue. My sister. As Giddis, you slap her harder. Evelyn, dialogue. My daughter, my sister, as Giddis, backhand, open fist, then you grasp her, hurl her into a sofa. Giddis, dialogue, I said I want the truth. As Evelyn, his assault at first seems miles away, but the jolt against the sofa brings you back to the now with a flood of fury. The greatest gap imaginable wrenches apart, screaming out words you've never said to anyone. Evelyn, dialogue, she's my sister and my daughter. As Giddis, a blinding gap, you're dumbfounded. Fury ebbs away. Feeling like a fool, you try to close this gap by absorbing the terrible implications behind her words. End of scene. Uh-huh. Uh, how are you? I, I, I've been calling you. Yeah. Have you have you slept? Sure. Have you had lunch? Khan can uh, fix you something. Where's the girl? Uh, upstairs. Why? I want to see her. She's she's having a bath right now. What? Why do you want to see her? Going someplace? Yes, we have a, a five thirty train to catch. Jake. J.J. Geddes for Lieutenant Escobar. No, look, what, what's the matter? What's wrong? I, I told you, we have a 5.30... You're going to miss your train. Lou, meet me at 1972 Canyon Drive. Yeah, as soon as you can. 
Why did you do that? You know any good criminal lawyers? No. Don't worry, I can recommend a couple. They're expensive, but you can afford it. Will you please tell me what this is all about? I found these in your backyard in the pond. They belonged to your husband, didn't they? Didn't they? I don't know. Yes, probably. Yes, positively. It's where he was drowned. What? There's no time to be shocked by the truth. The coroner's report proves that he had salt water in his lungs when he was killed. Just take my word for it, all right? Now, I want to know how it happened, and I want to know why, and I want to know before Escobar gets here, because I don't want to lose my license. I don't know what you are talking about. I, this is the craziest, the most insane thing. Stop it! I'm going to make it easy for you. You were jealous. You had a fight. He fell. He hit his head. It was an accident. But his girl is a witness. So you had to shut her up. You don't have the guts to harm her, but you got the money to keep her mouth shut. Yes or no? No! Who is she? And don't give me that crap about your sister because you don't have a sister. I'll tell you... I'll tell you the truth. Good. What's her name? Catherine. Catherine who? She's my daughter. I said I want the truth. She's my sister. She's my daughter. My sister, my daughter. I said I want the truth. She's my sister and my daughter. Please, go back. For God's sake, keep her upstairs. Go back. 